Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this Tuesday talk. Uh, my name is Jen Cheney. I'm the Vice President of Franchise Development for Right at Home. Joining us today is Jeremy Starkle, one of our existing franchisees. So if you're listening to this webinar live, that means that you are uh, currently in the process of uh, thinking about joining the Right at Home family by becoming one of our franchise owners. Uh, we're also going to make this webinar available on a recorded basis, so possibly you're listening to this uh, recording um, because you're also interested in becoming a Right at Home franchisee. So we're hoping over the course of the next 30 minutes, you're going to get some great uh, tidbits from Jeremy. Um, I've got a lot of great questions for you, Jeremy. But for those uh, who are listening live, you do have the ability to type a question to myself and to Jeremy. Uh, so there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen uh, where you can click on and type a question. Um, so uh, I will make sure that that question is answered over the course of the next 30 minutes. And don't be shy. We really love um, the interaction uh, between our listeners um, and ourselves. So don't be shy. Go ahead and type a question. We'll make sure that it's answered over the course of the next 30 minutes. Without further ado, let's get started. So Jeremy, how are you this morning? I'm doing fantastic. How are you, Jen? I'm great. Thank you. So um, why don't we start by talking about uh, the very beginning, even before you became a franchise owner. So why don't you just let our listeners know um, what you did before uh, you became a Right at Home franchise owner, and then possibly why you chose Right at Home as uh, the business that you wanted to purchase. Yeah, for sure. Um, just to give you guys a little bit about my background, um, I was in corporate America for probably about 16 years um, prior to my wife and I making the leap um, into the right at home franchise system. Um, so, uh, half of that was I was a director of recruitment for an online university. Um, and then the other half, I was in medical staffing. So I basically ran a pretty large team um, that, uh, you know, in, included you know, recruiters, account managers, uh, compliance specialists, and we staffed uh, travel nurses and, and placed them in hospitals all across the country. Um, so, you know, we, we did a little bit with the staffing side and I knew um, a little bit about that, you know, obviously coming in to write at home, which I felt it was a really, really valuable experience before making the leap. Um, but uh, as far as, you know, why we chose the right at home system specifically, and we did interview you guys with some of the other, um, you know, franchise systems out there, um, Home Instead, Visiting Angels. Um, I want to say there was one called Bright Star Care. Uh, but, you know, we, we felt that right at home specifically had more of a family feel um, in terms of support. Um, also, their training program was like two weeks long. Uh, very extensive. Um, some of the other, you know, franchises was like three days, I think was the, was the quickest. I'm like, I'm not sure I'm going to know anything about anything after three days. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a big uh, differentiator. Um, you know, I did know some people living in Omaha that worked at Right at Home Corporate, and they pretty much glowed about how Right at Home is way above the, the competition um, in terms of culture. Um, they reiterated the fact that like support was second to none, um, resources was second to none. So I did have some insight, you know, just because I knew some people that worked at the corporate office. So I think that was helpful. Uh, but just, you know, meeting with my franchise development coordinator, um, Brad Baylor at the time, and he was very thorough in the process and walking me through everything. And, you know, just that itself was, it gave me confidence that they weren't looking for just anybody and, you know, you know, and everybody, I guess, to come and join the system, you know, right at home was also very selective, um, which I liked. Great. And so you say we, you've, you've referenced, you know, uh, Kristen, your wife, um, yep. this is something that you guys um, do together. How was, how important was it? And maybe kind of describe to our listeners uh, the role that you play in the business uh, versus your wife, how uh, involved each of you are uh, and how important it was to have both of you um, on board uh, for this journey. Yeah, absolutely. Well, at first she, she was very part-time. She is a dental hygienist by trade. Um, so it was just me and one other person when we started the business uh, a little over two years ago. And, um, you know, she was in the business maybe one day a week and then she worked dental hygiene the rest of the time. So it was very part-time. Um, that as the last two years, we've grown so much. She's here in the business full time, no longer working dental hygiene. Um, 
you know, she, she tries to keep up on a license just so she doesn't lose it. So she'll do a shift every once in a while, but we now have nine office staff, um, including her. Um, so she does a lot of the, the billing, the payroll, um, uh, you know, the, the, the client support side, um, you know, just making sure she checks on the clients, making sure they're getting good service. Um, you know, my role is really focused on growth, uh, business development, marketing. Um, I have a team of four recruiters. Um, that's my forte. I'm a, I'm a recruiter by trade. And, you know, so I, I really am very hands-on in their coaching and their development and their one-on-ones and making sure we find people because right now it's a candidate driven market. So we have to be super aggressive and finding employees and selling them on, you know, why, why they should come work for right at home. And so that's really where my focus has been. Okay. Awesome. And we're going to get to that. That's a question that I have uh, later on here. Um, but you've mentioned, uh, okay. So maybe describe to our listeners your exact territory, because, you know, we've got territories available all over the United States. We've got some territories that are in major metro areas. We've got some territories that are a little bit more rural. So maybe describe to our listeners uh, kind of the makeup of your territory um, and uh, some of the um, you know advantages or disadvantages to the type of territory that you have or yeah. challenges, let's say. Yeah, for sure. And I was, that was one thing that I was really nervous about even before we took the leap, Jen, is you know, this territory wasn't in a major metropolitan area you know, it's basically farm country, um, backwoods, you know, you know, a uh, lot, lot of gravel roads, <laughs> um, you know, in, in a lot of that, you know, we didn't have the population density, which made me a little nervous. And, you know, our, to get our senior count where, uh, you know, a metropolitan area would be, we have to really expand outside um, of the lines. So we, our area is, is pretty large and vast, um, but it, it includes a lot of small populated, you know, cities or, or villages, I guess if you call them. Um, and, and, that, and that does create some challenges because we do have to, if we get a client an hour and a half away, we have to find a caregiver an hour and a half away. Um, and we don't have the, the luxury of everything being localized um, with the population density. So... Um, that has been a struggle, but we've been very um, strategic in making sure that we're constantly hiring, um, even if we don't necessarily have a client quite yet, um, but always having people on deck and making sure that our recruiters are uh, posting ads and posting jobs in, in, in these little pockets and these little towns um, constantly. Um, because who knows when we're going to get that next client um, in that area. So it would be nice to be able to have the resources available so we can take the case on as soon as that opportunity strikes. Sure. Yep. And then even, I, I hate to even bring it up, uh, but here we are in August of 2021. And I hate to say the word COVID, um, but maybe describe for our listeners how long you were a franchise owner before let's say COVID hit, which I would say, describe that as March of 2020. Okay, so how long were you a franchise owner before COVID hit? And then maybe some of the um, challenges that, that you faced during COVID um, and the amount of support uh, that you received from your partners here at Right at Home Corporate. Yeah, like nine months into owning, you know, Right at Home, COVID struck and and, you know, obviously it was devastating, you know, to everybody and, and, you know, Chris and I, especially being new business owners and trying to figure things out. And each day was a new day and in each day was new information. And we were just trying to kind of roll with some of the punches and uh, right at home with uh, corporate was awesome and making sure that they created a, um, a COVID task force and they were uh, specifically responsible to um, having calls with any, uh, addressing any concerns with COVID, uh, making sure that they, they, they did like a conference call weekly with, with us um, just to make sure that they were, we were, we felt like, you know, they were there for us when, when we needed them. Uh, when we had questions, we could go to them with a, for answers. And um, that was huge because, you know, we were trying to just figure things out and being brand new business owners, we're still trying to figure things out, you know, and then COVID gets dropped on us. So it made it even worse. <laughs> Um, but you know what, I, I, I'm really thankful that Right Home Corporate was there because uh, without them, I don't know if we would have been as successful in 
just kind of powering through some of that as, as we were. Awesome. And just so you guys know, we are still doing that, unfortunately. I think for a brief moment there, we were saying, you know, COVID is behind us. <laughs> Not quite yet. Uh, it's still there. And I think it's kind of a new normal, but uh, we are still very on top of it and supporting our franchise owners uh, through this the best that we can. Um, so thanks for everything that you're doing, Jeremy, to, to get through that. But uh, in the meantime, we have uh, had two questions that have come in. So I'm going to read this first one to you, Jeremy. Was your wife involved in the initial evaluation process? Did she help make the decision to join right at home? And before you answer that question, I do want to know um, that, you know, we're visiting with Jeremy today. His business partner is his wife, Kristen. We have had a, a mixture of different owners. So we have had people like Jeremy that come in and um, he decides that, you know, he's going to run the business 100% himself, um, you know, and then his spouse is going to keep her full time job. But it's important. Um, that the spouse still is involved in, in the evaluation process, um, even if, you know, Jeremy was going to be um, the one who was the operating principal and Kristen wasn't going to be involved. Um, so um, I'll let you answer that question, Jeremy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Jim, what did you ask? I, like, okay, so was your wife okay. involved in the initial oh. evaluation process? Yes. And did yeah, she yeah, help yeah. make the decision to join? Sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She was 100% involved. Like her and I were like 50-50, like you know, we wanted to, uh, and she worked dental hygiene for so long. I was in corporate America. We wanted our biggest motivation and we wanted something as our own. And we wanted to be able to, you know, kind of create something from the ground up, you know? And, and, and so we were, that's why we were both in this together. We were both exploring options together, looking at different um, franchises together, going through the interview process together. Um, and even though she wasn't like hundred percent of the business to begin with, um, she was still there. Like she would even work after hours at first, sometimes just to know what's, in, what's going on with the schedule. And, um, and she would s start learning um, payroll and start learning billing, just kind of, you know, slowly integrated into it, um, you know, until she was able to fully move in into the business. Got it. Okay. And then I know this is something that you are not going to mention. So I am going to mention it. Yeah. Um, Jeremy uh, was a rookie of the year this year. So congratulations to you, Jeremy. <laughs> That's a really big deal. Um, so rookie of the year, and here we are, you've been a franchise owner for, for two years at this point. And this next question, this is why I bring this up, because I believe that you did receive rookie of the year for, for multiple things. Um, but um, your answer to, to this question, I think is going to play a big or did play a big part as to why you received um, that uh, awesome award. So this question asks, what advice do you have for potential franchisees who do not have recruiting experience so they can hire the right staff? And then to piggyback off of that also, how do you ensure that you retain those employees if there's no client slash demand for their service at that exact moment? Yeah, I mean, that's a tough one. I mean, I think, you know, and honestly, there's a lot of other successful owners besides me just having a recruiting background that come into the system, um, you know, from a lot of different various backgrounds. So it's not just, you know, recruiting. I think that's going to be it. I think a lot of it is just being um, ambitious, um, you know, wanting to get out in front of people, um, you know, be passionate about what we do um, as an organization. You know, our mission is awesome. At the end of the day, we can feel pretty proud and about what we do because our work is so rewarding. Uh, we're able to really impact someone's life and be able to help them stay independent as long as they possibly can at home. And I mean, no one wants to go to a nursing home at the end of the day, it, you know, if they can help it or assisted living. I mean, there's times obviously when they have to, but if we can help them, you know, stay longer independently in their home as long as they possibly can, where they are there kids that that grown up in there and, and they have all those memories? I mean, that's pretty cool at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. um, yep. But yeah, so I, you know, I don't necessarily, I think just, you know, being pa passionate about what it is our mission is as a, as a company um, and ambitious to put that um, passion into practice, uh, being able to, you know, um, to be able to get out there and grind. I think that's one thing that was helpful for me. Like the first six months, all I did was, you know, my other office employees stayed there to answer the phones and help did some recruiting, but I was out and about marketing outside sales, like introducing myself to all the hospitals, nursing homes, assisted livings, 
um, you know, and just in explaining the value in our partnership, like this is how we can help you, you know, this is how right at home can help you in the long run. Um, yep. so, you know, really just creating those partnerships was, was really big. Okay. Awesome. Can you give some, maybe some specific examples, because, um, something that we talk about all of the time here is how important it is to take care of your caregivers not only taking care of the clients, of course, that's very important, but so important for our franchise owners to take care of their caregivers. So can you maybe provide some specific examples on how you take care of your caregivers, some type of employee appreciation or right. you know, benefits or, or whatever that may be, just a few examples of how, how you retain those caregivers. Oh gosh, it's so important right now more than ever to be able to appreciate your, your staff and your, your caregivers out in the field. Um, you know, we do things like, you know, uh, show them appreciation with caregiver. We call it caregiver rewards, um, you know, where they can earn entries into a drawing each month um, where they can win really cool things. Um, we've given away like uh, TVs, Apple watches, um, $150 uh, gift spa certificate, I think was last month. Um, this month we're giving away this um Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet because it's like back to school time. Awesome. Um, but we're, we do a lot of things like that. Um, in addition to like caregiver of the month and gift cards. And we also partner with a lot of local businesses. Um, we, we just ask, uh, we just solicit for them for, for giveaways. Um, our marketing person's been great in just reaching out to Raising Canes. Um, hey, would you be interested in just donating a gift basket to one of our caregivers that work so uh, work so hard for their clients during COVID times, you know, just to, and we will we'll plug you on social media for for showing your token appreciation. They just give us stuff, um, and we just we give it away. Uh, we do random we, we do random Facebook lives. Um, we, we 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 we're always having fun. I, we I always talk to my recruiters about sell culture first and pay second, because at the end of the day, like pay. You know, someone, anyone can pay another dollar to an hour, but it's culture that's going to win out and keep people here. That's right. That is so incredibly true. And we actually had another uh, question regarding your actual territory. So can you describe um, to our listeners uh, how rural your territory is? So for example, uh, mm -hmm. your main office is in Norfolk, Nebraska. So, uh, mm -hmm. which is one of the largest towns in your territory. So and yes. what's, what's the rough, population uh, of Norfolk and approximately how many seniors are in that market? Yeah, so um, Norfolk um, is about 24,000 uh, population. And uh, there's another office that we have, uh, we opened up at the, uh, the beginning of the year in Columbus, which is about 45 minutes straight south of us. And there are about 25, 26,000 in Columbus. Um, so those two towns are basically our hubs in this particular territory. Um, and then everything else outside of here, you got like onesie and twosie towns, like thousand population, 1500, maybe 3000 is about the biggest. Um, so it's not a real big territory. It's just really spread out. Um, and therefore we have to really divide and conquer with recruiting um, to be able to make it work. Um, and then we just purchased a second territory um, at the beginning of the year. Um, that's more central Nebraska. And there are a little bit heavier, heavier pop pockets of population there. Um, but we really are just starting to branch into that territory now. What made you to decide to expand? You know, I mean, everything's been going good. You know, the recipes um, has been working here. And so we felt like, you know, the, the territory right next to us, our neighboring territory makes the most sense to just keep that, um, that cycle going and just branch out into that area. It's still in Nebraska. All the laws are the same. Um, we're, we're signed up with a VA, we're signed up with a DHHS to provide med waiver, um, as, in addition to private pay. So we know all those laws, we know all, all those practices. So we thought, well, let's just move out West a little bit and then, you know, just see what we can do to grow that area and help that community. Awesome. Okay. So knowing that, uh, our listeners are made up right now of several individuals who are thinking about, uh, joining right at home. So what are maybe the, the top three pieces of advice uh, you give them if they too want to become a right at home franchise owner or even better if they want to strive to also be rookie of the year? 
um, when they first join? You know, be aggressive. Um, coach, you know, if you hire, you train someone um, to be an employee of yours, set strong expectations, um, set goals for yourself for growth. Even if you start um, out slow, you know, make, make those goals realistic and, and, and e easy to um, achieve. Um, like even for instance, like us, my goal in the first two months was just find one client. And, and I did like, right, right before that two months was up, like we finally got our first client, even though it was like, oh my gosh, we're forking over all this money for rent and utilities and all, all these operational expenses. And I have my person I hired, I'm paying for their salary. Um, just keep, keep your eye on the ball because I think that's, what's going to help you stay successful. Um, and don't, don't get complacent. I think even as we grow and we're having success now, you know, I always challenge myself to get out of my comfort zone and what's the next thing? Well, what's the next thing, you know, so, you know, what's, an, what's the next nursing home we haven't established that relationship with? Like, let's, let's go find that, you know, because I think when you feel like, okay, I, I I'm there, you know, then that's where I think you start kind of losing that growth as a business owner. Um, and then also just the, the ability to evolve and, and, and continue to, to push yourself and, and, and get better. Awesome. Okay. So you mentioned your goal the first two months was to get one client. So mm -hmm. how important is it once you became a franchise owner to set those goals, you know, short-term and long-term. So what, what are your long-term goals? Maybe it's, maybe it's more than just one. Yeah. Um, are you asking me my long-term goals? Mm -hmm. too? Yep. <laughs> sure am. Well, yeah. Um, well, right now my long-term goal is to really develop central Nebraska um, to get, and, and as well as Northeast Nebraska, our first territory, I want those two territories. I want right at home to be known as the top in-home care provider, like bar none. Um, you know, when people think of right at home or for in-home care, like it's not even a question. Um, and, and we are starting to develop that reputation. I think it takes time. Um, and it takes, it, it takes bending over backwards in terms of customer service. I mean, there's times where I've had to go because it uh, take care of someone because a caregiver called in or my wife who has had to go care for someone who's called in sick um, at first, especially. Um, but you know what? Clients remember that um, and they, they don't forget. Um, I mean, we, had, we just took care of a client in a nursing home um, that we hadn't um, done business with us uh, last week. And the, the gal uh, just needed a ride uh, to a funeral. And we gave her a ride and accompanied her to the funeral. And we're, it was just a four hour shift. But now the nursing home administrator reached out to us yesterday, wants to come down and meet our staff and get more flyers. And it is so appreciative that we were able to do that for their um, nursing home resident. Awesome. Um, so just going the extra mile for customer service, like that's, that's what I want to be known as. I, I want to be able to be that agency that, you know, is the agency in Nebraska. Awesome. Which, by the way, that was one of the questions that came in. And since uh, while you were answering that question, I've had three more questions come in. Now, I can go a little bit uh, past 1030. How yeah, are you fine. on time? Yep. Okay, I want to make sure that I get all these answered uh, yep. for our listeners. Uh, okay, so when you first started, um, what did your office staff look like? And, and here you are two years later. Uh, yep. What does your office staff look like now? Now, you have your main office in Norfolk, and then you've got a, a satellite office. So maybe just describe where you're at now, as far as uh, personnel in your office staff, what their roles are, what they're doing yep. and timing, um, timing of hiring those individuals. Yep, exactly. Yep. We have uh, four recruiters. Um, we have a client care coordinator. We have a scheduling coordinator. Um, we're about to hire another uh, scheduling coordinator. Um, and then it's me, Kristen. Um, we have one person and that does strictly outside sales and marketing. Um, she's out of our Columbus office. There's nine of us total. Um, in the office um, right now. And I'm looking to hire another recruiter um, for the Columbus, which would be 10. Um, and then uh, probably we're actually getting ready to open up. Uh, we signed a lease on our third location in Grand Island. Um, so next Wednesday, we take possession of that. Um, so we're going to probably hire some staff for that office as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's growing. I mean, I, and, and that's another thing too. It's like, if you want to see results, hire office staff, like that's, your bread and butter because they're going to be able to go find people. They're going to be able to provide the good customer service. They're going to be able to talk to prospective clients and help them through that qualification pro intake process. 
um, where you'll be able to get inside sales conversions and growth for your business. Great. Great. Okay. So this next question, do you also provide medical services to clients or just home care, i.e. cleaning, cooking, et cetera? Yeah, we're pretty much like the, the companion care um, business. We, we do some personal care, but we don't really get into a lot of extensive personal care with dealing with lifts and, you know, strictly strong bathing cases. We let the other agencies do that. Um, you know, a lot of what we do is we, we're known for more light duty um, and we don't do anything medical. We're strictly non-medical. So we don't do any nursing, um, you know, and, and I don't know. I mean, I've talked to a lot of owners. Um, some of them do some nursing and some, some of them don't. Um, you know, there's also some ri more risk involved with, with the nursing element and medications and administration of those medications and stuff like that, where I don't know if the return on investment is necessarily worth it for us, but that could be different for someone else in a different state or a different territory too. Sure. Okay. Got it. And we've got about uh, four minutes left for our listeners. So if you guys have any more questions, go ahead and type them in and I'll make sure uh, that Jeremy gets them answered uh, before we hang up here. Uh, but next question here, due to COVID and the various government, government benefits that have become more available, i.e. stimulus checks, unemployment compensation, et cetera, a lot of people are not looking for employment. How do you deal with the shortage in staff to meet the demands and remain competitive in the market? Uh, yeah, and I tell my recruiters this all the time, let's find the people who wanna work because there are people out there that wanna work. And there's people at the end of the day that they like having a paycheck, but they also like the meaning of their work. Um, and, and I think that's a big too, especially for a caregiver, you have to have the heart for this, this work. Um, you know, it, it really can't all be all about the money because no one's going to get rich being a caregiver. Um, you know, so let's, let's find the people who really want to make, to have purpose and meaning and, and, and feel fulfill, fulfilled in their, in their job, because there's a lot of them out there. It just, now it's up to us to find them. Um, because you, you know, that has been a little bit of a struggle with, uh, we did find that a lot of people were applying just to apply, um, when, when, when the unemployment um, benefits were um, around, and I know federal still around till uh, September fourth, unless they extend it. But um, but we would report them to the Department of Labor if they would set up an interview with us and not show up, or if they would apply and then we couldn't get a hold of them, or we would set orientation and training and they wouldn't show up. We reported them to the Department of Labor because then that way we had a at least a little bit of accountability. Um, and the Department of Labor, we found, started to really start following up with these cases. And they would call our office and ask us about more in more detail about what happened. And we would just give them the information and the facts. And but, you know, they're in their hat. I'm kind of glad that they did that, you know, so that way at least employers would have some type of accountability. Sure. Yep. OK, great. Thank you for that. And then uh, this final question here. So you mentioned when you first started, you got your office you hired one employee, you were paying, paying that person uh, um, his or her salary. You wanted to get one client in the first two months. So how many caregivers did you hire and did you have on staff? So let's just pretend you got a phone call. Yep, we got our first client. How many caregivers did you have on staff and did you hire initially right out of the gate? Yeah, I think like that was a big part of um, our strategy was to keep hiring because if we didn't have caregivers, the cases that did eventually come in, we couldn't take on. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we had, a, I mean, we were hiring, I, mean, I think in the first month we had like eight, nine hires, um, okay. just because we were constantly just posting jobs, calling applicants, um, screening applicants, um, doing interviews. Um, I think we had probably, you know, eight or nine people hired, I want to say the first month. And, um, and there's only one of those people that are still with us till, uh, today. So, um, a lot of them ended up falling off because we didn't have the cases. We didn't have to work for them. Um, that was a little bit of a challenge at first. We did tell them to like, you know, hey, stay with us. We're, we're going to find cases. We're new in town. Um, hang in there with us. Well, it, you know, it's going to turn around. Uh, communication's big. Like if you're not following up with those guys daily, like they're just going to go find another job. Um, even giving them some type of hope of like, hey, I, I had a, a, lead, a possible lead that came in today. Yep. Uh, hopefully we'll know more this next week and hopefully we'll get you out working. Um, that's important too. If you're not communicating, you're going to, they're going to go take another job, but 
Um, but just making sure you keep hiring because if you stop just because the case loads aren't coming in, then, it, you know, then that's can be recipe for disaster. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Jeremy, this has been awesome. I literally yeah. got through all the questions that I wanted to make sure to ask you. We had a ton of questions coming from our listeners. Thank you for that, by the way. Um, is, are there any parting words, anything that we uh, didn't talk about that you'd like to give some advice to our listeners? You know, I think the biggest thing that Chris and I were contemplating, you know, when we were in your shoes is, you know, um, you just, it just making the leap, you know, I mean, that was the biggest thing that we were nervous and on offense about because we worked, we had good jobs working in corporate America, great benefits. And then all of a sudden to throw all that away <laughs> to yeah. become small business owners. Um, it, it, it was, it was crazy, you know, but the thing is, is like, we had a plan, we had a mission, we had a purpose. We felt like right at home was the, was the perfect system for us. Um, and then when we got into it, I'm like, why didn't we do this sooner? You know, like, yeah. what, what was I waiting for? You know? Yeah. Um, so, so if you're on, if you're hesitant, you know, I, I, I don't know, like one of the, the, you know, the validation calls, you know, talking to the different owners and stuff like that, ask them the tough questions, you know, um, I think that really helped us because they were honest with us. I think we talked about eight or nine different owners in different areas, rural areas like ours. And that was really helpful to really, you know, drill down some of our concerns and just to get some of the answers and some of their concerns and roadblocks. But it helped us really get to the point where like, all right, we're doing this thing. Yes. Okay. Awesome. This has been great. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for taking this, yeah. this morning. For yeah, everybody so. listening, um, we're hopeful that you can join us uh, in two weeks. Um, at 10 a.m. Central Time, where we, we will be talking to Brian Petronic and Margaret Haynes, um, our CEO and COO of Right at Home. Again, Jeremy, thank you so much. I hope you have an awesome day. All right. Have a good day. All right. See you. Bye. Bye.